Congrats for this update on the changes and uh, what's going on generally at Bradford. We'll have to leave that up to Mr. Lavity and Mr. Moore. I do understand that things are going well and the exams will be starting in less than two weeks. So I'm, it's nice to know that everyone is still working. I'd like to thank the students, parents, staff, school board, and the community generally for the support that they have given to me at BDHS over the past six years. It's very encouraging to receive this support morally, physically, monetarily, through awards and prizes, and in many other ways. I trust that you will continue to give that support to Mr. Lavity, the staff, and students, because I feel that this is a great school which is driving and flourishing not only in the scholastic area, but also in other areas such as corporate education with business, multicultural nature of the school and the community, sports, drama, and many other club activities. I, mean, I wish them all the very best in the future. And I would like to thank again the uh, students for their gift uh, somewhere here that very last afternoon, but the gift of uh, golf plus fours and the sweater and the, and the cap. Whoever picked out the side, and I think it was Pip Heritage, but whoever picked it out made the right choice because the fit is perfect. And I'm not the only one getting some use out of that golf outfit, by the way. My son, who's uh, present in third year now at Western, thinks that I'm years behind him in keeping up with new clothing styles. But he has worn that outfit several times to show off to his friends when they go golfing. So it is getting good use. I certainly enjoyed my retirement to date. We took a two week trip to Nova Scotia just after school started. We just got back from three weeks in Florida. It's not too hard to take. <laughs> the only thing that really bothers me is the guilt feeling that I, I get when I go out golfing on a school day. It almost feels like I'm skipping school, but thankfully the guilt feeling leaves after the first hole. <laughs> well, that's enough about uh, my travels. Now I should get into the more formal part of my remarks. And uh, by the way, these remarks will not contain any reference to the four R's. <laughs> Respect, responsibility, and responsibility. Because I'm sure that you all know them by now. In fact, I went into the library before uh, we came in here, and uh, a couple of the Zelkies between them managed to get all four, so I think you know. Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Lafferty, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to offer my sincere congratulations to the graduates here tonight, because they have certainly earned their diplomas and awards through a great deal of perseverance and hard work. Along the way, most of their parents provided support and encouragement, so I'm sure that they will share a great feeling of satisfaction with the job well done. I also don't want to forget the very significant contribution over the years of our own staff, who have not only taught the subject curriculum well, but also have encouraged, cajoled, prodded, and otherwise tried to entice the students to give their best effort. We all get discouraged at times, but those who are here tonight never gave up. About a year ago now, we were fortunate to have Rick Hansen visit Bradford on his Man in Motion World Tour. Those who went downtown to see Rick will remember it as a very cold, windy, wintry day. I hope they will also remember the message that Rick Hansen gave that day to everyone in the crowd that was assembled. It was simply to be the best that you can be and never give up despite your handicaps and difficulties. Rick Hansen certainly carried that through and completed his world tour in spite of the many difficulties and handicaps that he had. I'm not going to talk about each student here tonight because it would take too long. Mr. Moore said I had two minutes. Oh, two minutes more. All right. Uh, however, I would like to especially congratulate Harry Stoddard for the great honor he has brought to himself, his family, and this school in winning one of the 10 President's Scholarships at the University of Guelph. His total value is $16,000 over four years. Why did Harry represent this school in Simcoe County at the Canadian Science Fair competition in Halifax while he was in grade nine? Well, I think it was because he tried to be the best that he could be. 
and he continued to give his best effort in successive grades. I think in many ways, Harry symbolizes the graduates here tonight. Generally speaking, our graduates try to be the best that they could be. They've known as classmates leaving school over the past three or four years for a variety of reasons. But those who are receiving their diplomas continue to struggle up to achieve a goal that they and our parents set down as a basis for a successful future. As you well know, achieving your diploma is no guarantee of success. However, it will open many doors and provide you with many opportunities to move in your area that you have chosen. If you will constantly try to be the best that you can, then you will gain a feeling of self-worth and confidence. Never give up on yourself, despite the difficulties. I know this past year, several people were really thrown in the towel, but those who are here tonight are the ones who didn't give up. Keep up with the new developments and the trends in your chosen field so you can stay at the leading edge instead of struggling in the backwash. Dare to think and be different. That's how new discoveries are made. Ask probing questions so you can glean the best from the experts with experience in your field. Sir Frederick Benton was born and raised and went through high school near Bradford. I won't say where, but it was near Bradford. He was not a brilliant scholar, but he did have the ability to think and to ask probing questions, which eventually led to his discovery of insulin, which is used worldwide in the treatment of diabetes. For this discovery, Bannon was awarded the Nobel Prize. We have a tremendous potential in our graduating class. Who can imagine what the next 20 to 50 years will bring about as we enter the 21st century? <coughs> I will close with one more or less science-oriented story that I hope you will remember. The wind is one of nature's great sources of power. In the past, it has been utilized to a greater extent than it is today. We don't think of it much anymore, except if we hear about a tornado or a hurricane. I would like you to think of it in terms of your future as it relates to the following story. A young person was trying to cross a rather wide river from the north shore to the south shore. Halfway across, a strong south wind came up and started forcing the person back. The young person thought about this difficulty and then rigged up a sail to take advantage of the wind and made a successful crossing. What can we learn from this? Now, before someone says, don't try to cross a wide river without a sail, I would like you to remember that in life, things are constantly changing. We must be prepared to cope with change, adapt the climate of the times, set our sails and harness the wind, so to speak, to attain our goals. You are embarking on one of the greatest adventures of your life, to improve your self-image, to create more meaning in your life and in the lives of others. This is your responsibility. So I ask you to accept life's challenges and adjust using all your skills and experience to make things work to your advantage and success. This can be done by striving diligently to be the very best that you can be. My best wishes for the future and congratulations again. Thank you, Mr. Hanna. Mr. Dick Boswell, Director of the Simcoe County Board of Education, will bring greetings from the Board Administration. Ladies and gentlemen, and young ladies and gentlemen, it really is a pleasure to, to be here tonight. Uh, at close to 6.30, I wasn't sure that I would be here because I was very close to Carilia, so the very first message I got to the graduates is, if you drive, don't speed. <laughs> I would like to bring just two messages to those of you who are graduating uh, tonight. The first is that uh, I have had the occasion over the last two or three years to have visited in this school. Uh, on one occasion, uh, at a citizen's 
uh, court a citizen's uh, um, function with the federal government of Ontario, and uh, more recently at a co-op at dinner, recognizing the contributions of the community. And my impression of this school is that it is a really delightful place to have been and to be a student. There is a really wonderful feeling, a positive feeling in this school, and it's obvious to any of us who attend here from the outside. And I think that you were very lucky to have spent any part of your high school days in this high school. And I think that uh, the very great respect that you showed to Mr. Hanna when he arrived here tonight speaks well not only for you and Mr. Hanna, but for the school. The second thing that I want to tell you is that this school, like others in Simcoe County, takes great pride in this the academic standards it sets for its graduating students. And I know from very practical experience and my experience in the province of Ontario that the people who leave the secondary schools in Simcoe County and who leave this school have as good an education at the secondary school level as does any student in Ontario. And I hope that you take that with you, that you are confident and the achievements that you have uh, in this, this school. I hope that you have pride in Bradford High School because I know this school and its teachers has a great deal of pride in you. Uh, please accept my very best wishes for those of you who are continuing on in the school for the rest of the year. For those of you who are other places, very best uh, wishes for the future. Thank you very much for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Greetings from the Simcoe County Board of Education trustees will be delivered by Betty Aldridge, the trustee for the Alston area. <coughs> well, you're, you're lucky or unlucky. Not only have you got top administration here, but two trustees. I was um, at a graduation for that ceremony at that other high school that uh, I know that Bradford students don't like to speak about, but um, it's banding. <laughs> and I was at that particular school for very particular reason. I was also asked to address the, the graduating class, and that, in that class happened to be my, my daughter. So it was a very important time. And the words that I presented there are the same as I'm going to speak to you tonight. I think they were appropriate then, and they're as appropriate for you as they, as they were at that time. In my travels back and forth to the board office and various, I have a great deal of time on my hands, and I find that I enjoy listening to music and tapes. I recently discovered the work of Dr. Leo Biscaglia. Like Dr. Biscaglia is a professor of education at the University of Southern California. His expertise is in the field of human potential, and he taught a course entitled Love. Dr. Biscaglia's tapes are sprinkled with personal anecdotes, plenty of humor, and true words of wisdom. Allow me to share with you some of his thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. But Scalia continues this thought by stating that we should not expect others to make us happy. We must create our own joy. It's not the situation that makes us happy, it's ourselves that makes us happy. We must take full responsibility for our joy and our life. Life is what we've been given, not necessarily what we want. But Scalia emphasizes that life is not only what we are given, life is how we take what we are given and what we make of it. I agree with them when he states, I don't believe in luck or fate, I believe in you. You, the graduates of 87, have matured in completing the halls of Bradford. Through your experience at university or colleges or work, there will be trials and tribulations, ups and downs, valleys and peaks, but it's there for you to conquer. Your ideal is in your heart. Your greatest challenge is you. In finishing, I will share two statements of the Scalia that I attempt to practice. Have the courage to love. Since love costs nothing to give or to take, you have nothing to lose. <coughs> it is a day wasted unless you laugh, learn something new, or found someone or something to love. You are the bright lights of the future, and to you I say congratulations and lots of good luck.
Same thing as all this. Um, James Wright, the student council's treasurer for this year, will now introduce the TH Gardner. Uh, James Martin is here to uh, introduce the John Douglas and TH Gardner Award. <coughs> The T.H. Gardner Awards will be presented by Mr. Gardner. The Iowa Mechanics Award will be, be presented to Rod Reynolds. Thank you. 